Hello and welcome to another episode of the Sync Bamboo Podcast. I'm your host, JJ, and our podcast guest today is Paulino Botao, based in Germany and originally from Portugal. <laughs> our three main topics today will be the Bamboo Construction Kit, which is a modular, adaptable, IKEA-style instruction manual and open source. Um, the second topic will be the three-hectare bamboo test plantation with Paulino uh, in Mozambique in Africa. And the third topic will be his collaboration with Academia University, mainly Rhein-Main University in Germany, which is um, a very international and interdisciplinary and a new collaboration with the local university in Mozambique, Africa. So again, welcome, Paulino. Great to have you on board here. Hey, thank you, JJ, for having me. I'm really glad to be here with you. Uh, we didn't have a chance to talk when we were in Dortmund, but uh, yeah, finally we can have a, a small conversation about bamboo. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. We first met at the European Bamboo in, in Germany uh, last year, and uh, it was so busy, so interesting. We, we were running uh, one over the other, but had no time to talk. So, uh, well, now, no. <laughs> now let's do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but we can still do it. Um, yeah, as, as you say, my name is Pauline Hotel. I'm from Mozambique, based in Germany, in Frankfurt. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. And awesome. I don't know what else so, you want to know from me. Um, actually, yes. Well, it, yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, well, just a little intro, maybe some background, um, how you stumbled upon bamboo um, and um, and um, how, um, yeah, how, how you got where you are because you're uh, doing some really interesting stuff. I'm personally double, triple interested into the bamboo construction kit, also regarding your test plantation with bamboo in Africa on location, which is super important. And obviously the collaboration with Academia, which is an important part to get the next generation bamboo youngsters on board to plant more bamboo and work more with bamboo, right? So um, basically, how, how did you get there? I, I think you're doing a lot of stuff, which is really key. So um, please um, uh, tell me. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, um, first, uh, I got in touch with bamboo. I mean, uh, bamboo is into our culture since I was... I was young, right? Because um, at least what I remember, my grandma's house was made out of them. But uh, oh, cool! Got, it, yeah, I mean, being Mozambique, we have a lot of bamboo, not as much as, uh, as um, Asia or Latin America, but yeah, we still have a lot of bamboo. But by then, I didn't appreciate cool. much about bamboo. But all I got is really interesting me when I was doing. Uh, when I went to study north of Mozambique, where you have a lot of bamboo, and they're using a bamboo for fences, for building house, for furniture. Then it got to my, it called me attention. And I was running a bar, which was maybe having a lot of furniture and decoration out of bamboo. So, because in Mozambique, bamboo is mostly in the north, but not in the south, where, where I'm coming from, where I have my plantation. And then uh, my interest grew even bigger when I went to study in India. Uh, then I saw the potential of bamboo, like the really potential. So it really caught my attention. That was in 2000, 2005 to 2008. Uh, I was in India. Uh, I was doing my, my, my bachelor's there. And my interest was growing. So when I came back uh, from India, I started working in a, this eco resort, very fancy one, uh, which where seventy percent of it was made out of bamboo, and uh, we charge in a fortune for the guests to stay there. Then I said, "Oh wow, this is really interesting." So, I want to go into bamboo. Um, yeah, from there when I went to south of Mozambique, I was also working in uh, tourism because this is my background, tourism, and I decided to start a bamboo plantation because I wanted to offer an alternative construction material for all these resorts that we have on this beautiful beach called Ponta do Ouro. Yeah, but uh, then I went to do my master's and my master's, uh, yeah, that was a game changer when I started about uh, more bamboo um, ecosystem service, not just for the construction material, but for the environmental protection and so on and so forth. Um, and since then, I never stopped. Awesome. Yeah, well, awesome. this is wow. basically how, how I got into bamboo. Okay, 
So that's really um, so Sorry. basically a lot you were surrounded. Here. Yeah, don't worry. I think the the audio is pretty uh, good still. So uh, we'll work with what we have. <laughs> so um, regarding the bamboo construction kit, um, I uh, talked with uh, Christian, um, um, and um, he mentioned that you both kind of um, were working on on this idea, and that now you're joining forces uh, to see. Um, to get this bamboo construction kit idea really um, ongoing, right? So, um, yeah. How, yeah, how far enough, are you there? He, yeah, funny enough, we, that was such a big coincidence that myself and Christoph, we had almost the same topic. I did my master's in Portugal, in Lisbon, and he did his mm -hmm. master here in Germany. Uh, I'm Germany. not an architect, he's an architect, but I can build, but I'm not an architect. And uh, since Mozambique yeah. is uh, often affected by cyclones, uh, tropical cyclones, every year we have some cyclones mm -hmm. going on. Uh, then I decided to to do a dissertation or, or a project in uh, resilient uh, housing or kit, uh, resilient from uh, floods and uh, uh, cyclones. And uh, yeah. when I met Christoph in uh, Dortmund, when we were building the pavilion, which we exposed in Dortmund in the first uh, edition of uh, European bamboo, if you remember, was like that big structure on the on the, on the entrance. Yeah, I have yeah, a video so... on that regarding the, the unique bamboo pavilion, which you rebuilt on the uh, European Bamboo Expo, which was like uh, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So beautiful. we met there and uh, when we were discussing, we find out that we have almost the same topic, although I was doing my master's in Portugal, he was doing his master's here in Germany. And I'm not an architect, I'm more environmental uh, um, environmental guy, and he's an architect. And mm -hmm. we say, oh, this is beautiful. Let's do something together with your know-how, with my know-how. Let's build a kit. Let's do a kit together. And, um, and yeah, so we, yeah. Go. And, um, basically, have you, um, what are the next steps there um, regarding this um, this kit? Well, as we planning to build this in Mozambique, we we travel to Mozambique. We have an excursion with 12 students from Rhein University, Rhein my University. And uh, mm -hmm. we start a research, like, uh, like a framework, how this would look like. Uh, I already have my, like, my dissertation. I already had uh, a prototype. But uh, now we need more, more info. So we need to research a little bit more how exactly this will be. And it has to be affordable, of course. Affordable. Mm -hmm. As you see, like a IKEA style that is easy to put up and put off. Um, so yeah, so yeah. right now we are on this, and we had like um, ten days in Mozambique discussing uh, how how possibly this kit could work, and uh, we joined forces with uh, Eduardo Mondial University, uh, uh, Faculty of Architecture. So the students of the, from this faculty join us. So that was a great outcome. And uh, we are on this process now. Awesome. So this is like a, a collaboration between the German University Rhein-Main and this uh, local university in, in, in Mozambique, basically, for exactly. um, advancing with the bamboo construction kit. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Ex That's beautiful. Exactly. I mean, I had my own <laughs> prototype, but I'm not an architect or engineer, yeah. so we need to <laughs> make it safer. Yeah. And uh, so this joint Absolutely. venture between between the two universities, the two countries, I think it's just awesome and uh, a good thing will come out of it. It's super interesting. And do you have like prototypes you can share with me, like visual stuff, um, maybe um, for uh, which I can share later uh, on the on the yeah. blog post we'll publish on Blue Org. Yeah. Yeah, I can share what I have done so far uh, uh, on my prototype, which was mainly. Um, uh, uh, like the, the the design, like the architecture design, what what could be resilient to cyclones, and for many reasons I chose mm -hmm. uh, hexagonal uh, uh, um, hexagonal uh, form. Design. Yeah. Yeah. Design yeah. Cool. exactly because the geometrical design like the has bees. hexagonal. Exactly, and this is one of the yeah. things that I, I yeah. see. Okay, yeah. this is really really looks like a bee. Because it's easy to attach mm -hmm. uh, different uh, uh, mm -hmm. to assemble, right? Um, because yeah, in Mozambique yeah. and so many other countries, the local community doesn't have 
uh, financial condition to build at once. So I thought if you have like a, a kind of like a Zagonal, it's easy to expand and it's not that far from the local architecture. And uh, probably as, as yeah. you know, or in, as you may know, like the rounds, the rounds, uh, the uh, type of, of construction, it's resilient to, to the um, to the strong winds because of the form. So exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. it's not that far yeah. from the rounds. Uh, so this was one of the reasons for stability, easy to 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 rebuild and expand. But yes, I can share with you what I've done. But this is not going to be the final uh, prototype because we're still discussing with uh, Christoph, uh, the students uh, from Mozambique uh, University and the Einstein University. Yeah, but I can share with yeah. you later on. What I understand was, it, uh, the process. Like. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's share the first version um, for the blog article so people can also visualize and, and get some inspiration. And of course, it's it's a process, so it'll be, it'll get refined and and improved, um, obviously. Um, but I think it's a great idea to be inspired by nature um, for something the bees are using hexagonal forms. Uh, it has to be one of the best forms uh, per nature. So uh, smart move to to copy that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I think yeah. hexagonal. And um, hexagonal. yeah, I mean. No, I'll yeah, say yeah, hexagonal form is hexagonal form. If you notice, it's all over in the nature. Like you talk about the bee, bee eaves. You talk about mm -hmm. the, um, our DNA genetic. The the chemical form is there also. If you also check um, yeah. the turtle, the turtle skin, which which is really strong, is also an hexagonal form. Yeah, there's so many there's so many things in a in a in a nature that mm -hmm. you can compare yeah. the hexagon. So I believe it's a strong uh, um, yeah. uh, form to, to build something. But well, we still have to discuss. This is just an idea, right? I will say, yeah. But super interesting and absolutely um, like the permaculture principle to observe nature and, and, and learn and, and then use nature. So I think it's, it's really cool. <laughs> absolutely. And um, let's talk about the second topic, your your three hectare bamboo test plantation in, in Mozambique, Africa. So uh, this is kind of um, a key too, because basically you, you mentioned before, there is a lot of bamboo in the, what is it, in the north, but not in the south yeah. of Mozambique yeah, not specifically. In, no, yeah. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's right. We don't have bamboo in the south. Bamboo is only from the center up north to Mozambique. Mozambique, um, just like a small intro, Mozambique is like a 2,000, almost 3,000 kilometers of coastline. It's about 2,800 kilometers of coastline. Uh, it's a massive country, it's a very long country. So, Paulino, please do share with me about your three hectare bamboo test plantation plot in Mozambique, Africa. Yes, we do. I do have like a three hectares uh, test plantation with uh, more than uh, six or seven uh, species that have been trying since then, including uh, Bokoa, Sinica, uh, Desert Columbus and Milton, Desert Columbus and Sinica, Milton, Bokoa, Arodinacea, Bambusa Gigantia, and Bambusa Tsar. But of course, I will have 10 species there, uh, which is uh, treating mm -hmm. very well because we plant it in a coastline. It's really close to the sea, less than 600 meters from the sea. And uh, the soil was about spread out so I was a little bit surprised. agroforestry. It's agroforestry, exactly. I mean, probably you may know, it's always good to intercrop bamboo with the different crops. You can just plant bamboo, but you have to plant bamboo with uh, Absolutely. different crops. Yeah. And uh, I have uh, some uh, short-term crops like uh, pineapples, I have eight of pineapples uh, in between, and like so cool. Savan, we are playing some Evo, uh, there's a lot of six to five months uh, crops uh, mixed with uh, with. Uh... What's the distance? What's your setup? So uh, bamboo creates shade, so some crops like shade, other don't. So um, how do you manage that? Well, every bamboo I could at least uh, six to eight uh, meters apart, and six meters mm -hmm. to 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 four. I mean, eight to four. That's all what we have in all uh, bamboo in terms of distance. 
And in between, we have pineapple, which is, is doing really good. This is the third year that we're collecting pineapples. So two years ago, when I was in Mozambique, it was the first time that I tried one of the pineapples, very organic and really, really sweet. So yeah, every eight well, to eight meter by four meter, we have uh, an ambu and in between it. Crops. Basically, you have most of the bamboos you've mentioned are clumping uh, tropical bamboo, and uh, all the dendrocolumnus bamboos you mentioned, as I know, are uh, really uh, big, right? So we're talking about 20 to 30 meters uh, high. Yes, uh, well, as, as you probably know, Mozambique is in a tropical country, mm -hmm. and uh, the, 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 clump, the running bamboo doesn't grow there. It's almost impossible. I tried yeah. some also, just died. It doesn't even work, but all the tropicals are treating well. And uh, one mm -hmm. of the biggest ones that we have there, that so far I have seen, is the Dendro Calamus Leofum that can grow up to 15 uh, centimeters and can grow up to 15 mm -hmm. to 20 centimeters. But the rest of the others, they're still growing, but they're already tall. In October, mm -hmm. I mean, not in October, like uh, in February when we in Mozambique, we saw a lot of shoots coming, like really fast and really strong. And in wow. a diameter. Yeah. So probably in one or two wow. years, we'll have a uh, good, good results because um, all of the species that are planted there, they're treating well. And are you pruning like uh, the bamboo, like removing the oldest uh, branches to, to give, or are you just leaving the plants to, to grow? What's your uh, method there? Well, only now I start pruning the bamboo because I see some of them are struggling. To grow straight, you know, the management, one of the good mm -hmm. uh, practices to prune the branches. But I want to make use of these branches. So now I start doing uh, uh, straws, bamboo straws, and uh, on top of that, I'm multiplying as well with the, with, uh, the branches that I'm, I'm training. But I started this only two, two months ago. But before, it's just getting the bamboo to grow naturally uh, without much interference. We only managed to clear. Clearing where bamboo is growing is really, is really important. Yeah. But uh, pruning as part of like recently. Intervention. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. No, I was saying, I was saying, I was saying the clearing of the seeds are, are important. The clearing of where bamboo is growing is very important to so avoid the competition with different grass. Yeah. So in the pruning, I started very recently and using those branches to, to start to, to a straw. Because as you probably know, to make bamboo profitable, you have to use as much as you can from the entire, uh, entire plants. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do now. And you can, you can also use the material you prune as a mulching material for the bamboo itself. So I did a podcast uh, with um, Bamboo Leaf Tea. And, and basically, she shared lots of super interesting content regarding all the, the benefits of using the leaves, the branches. And, and and cooking it or or using it really like um like a, a boosting um liquid for the bamboo or other crops. So it, it's oh. it's I mean bamboo is so interesting. I mean it's really it's just it amazes me every every day. Every new thing I learn about bamboo is is, is amazing. So also if you yeah. if you do the pruning of the bamboo it should boost the bamboo even though as i hear it's not yet fully so it's still kind of not in yet. the growth process yeah yeah but it, it yeah, can yeah. help if you remove the oldest ones and and then the plant has more energy to grow new mm -hmm. ones and um basically of course it depends a little bit on the soil and the climate and all that but more or less, it, it does help quite a, a, a thing to, to do this um, pruning, even though probably it's not called pruning because pruning is more of the fruit trees, but it's the same idea. You remove like some parts of the plant to give more energy to the plant to, more to continue boosting. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, as you say, this is like is a very new plantation. Although I started 12 years ago, but uh, in 12 the first years four years, yeah, in the yeah. first four or five years, I had a lot of problems because there's always a fire going through the, the plantation. But uh, mm -hmm. it's amazing how bamboo are resistant. Don't get fire three years, they never die. But uh, they are start to, I always have to remanage, like uh, restart it. Uh, since mm -hmm. three years now, the three, four years that left for me, 
the farm never gets a little fire anymore. But that's uh, on the first four years back here, then a lot of problems. But it, that's a, a valid uh, challenge, basically fire. It's not just in Africa because of this uh, crop and burn method, right? Of like um, local people use. So maybe, I don't know if you use um, um, the vetiver grass, which is fire resistant. They use it in India. And basically you can do fire barriers with vetiver grass, which is two meters tall. And um, mm -hmm. the fire will get to the vetiver and there it will be like consumed because it has oil. So um, basically it's a fire barrier. I don't know if this is of any uh, use maybe. No, I never heard of such a grass. <laughs> I don't know if you can be having more than me, you might have, but I, you have well, for sure. You do There's... Is... Yeah, <laughs> let, let, could you like, if you, if you don't mind, just write me down the, um, sure. the name, I'll search I will. and I'll see if yeah. uh, we get that. Because it's, what we do now, we, we keep, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. No, no, please. No, you, you go ahead, uh, Paulina, please. No, we just, <laughs> we just clearing two meters around the plantation, at least mm -hmm. two meters, two and a half meters. So since then, yeah, uh, yeah we never had a fire anymore. But uh, okay. I learned also there's some species of bamboo that are fire resistant. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know which yeah. species are those, but whatever uh, natural uh, solution we have to stop the fire, that's it's welcome. Like I really appreciate if you could share with me this type of rice that we probably should use in Mozambique. I will. This is there is even a, a website. It's called vetiver. and they have lots of study uh, regarding the use of vetiver not only for fire or against fire, but also for soil improvement, um, wind break, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Even animal food and all that because this vetiver grass has uh, like 10, 15 meters deep roots. And mm -hmm, it has mm -hmm. oil. So basically vetiver grass is the base ingredient for a uh, natural perfume because of this oil. And it also boosts the microorganism in the soil because of this scent. And I had some lots of testing with vetiver, uh, where I use it with bamboo. And basically the first one and two years, yeah, it boosts yeah. the soil. And in the, when those one and two years, normally the bamboo starts so, taking off. Right. So after that, the vetiver, you don't need it anymore, uh, depending where you are, but it really helps to, to boost the, the bamboo growth. And even more, if you have the That's challenge cool. of fire, which is like really a tough thing, it could really help there. So I'm going to send you then the, the, the link. I'll also mention here in case other people who are listening have the same challenges as, as you had there regarding the fire, because, um, yeah, man, uh, I, I, I hope uh, later, uh, other people can reproduce the, the, the bamboo agroforestry. I've been talking with a friend in Guatemala from Vubu Bamboo. I don't know if you know him. He was at the European Bamboo Expo 2 in Germany. And he does also bamboo agroforestry in Guatemala. Maybe you have to talk together. Juan Carlos Martinez. Really no, very cool. Him. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, also I very cool. He has him. also the similar crops like you because it's tropical. Um, absolutely, yeah. man. There is some uh, knowledge there you can in, in, interact and exchange regarding um, cool. this. Thank you a lot for the seat, huh? <laughs> You're so welcome. We, You're as welcome, you, man. As, as, as you see, we always learn something. That's that's, that's what yeah. I love about bamboo. You know, we go to bamboo and Me then too. you learn something else. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's like nature too, you know, with the bees, it's like it's not just separate. Everything is like interconnected. So bamboo, obviously will probably within your bamboo agroforestry helps to reduce the, the, the temperature. I imagine it's, it's quite hot when the sun is shining and you have a yeah. six or 12 hours of sun. So probably the, your bamboo setup, with, which is intercropped, helps to, to reduce this, this little bit too um, hot climate for most crops, even though they're tropical crops, right? Because pineapple is a tropical crop, for example. The cassava, which is um, also a root, is also tropical crop, but also they they have their limits, right? I don't know. Did you try maybe coffee? Coffee could be interesting in in shade, shade bamboo coffee, lowland coffee. Yeah, I, I don't know um, cacao. I'm not I'm not sure if the coffee will grow on that region um, because it's very sandy uh, soil. Mm -hmm. Maybe okay. in a close yeah. future that the soil is getting better. Uh, probably mm -hmm. I could try anything I want to. As you say, that's awesome. the best. Um, yeah, test farming, test bamboo. 
So we try, yeah. we try whatever we want there. Yeah. It's our, our land. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, and yeah. what about um, cacao? Yeah, these are growing better. We don't have like a, a cacao producer in Mozambique so far from what I know, but I know a company mm -hmm. is being produced up north where the soil is completely different. It's more like kind of subtropical, not really tropical. Mm -hmm. And the soil mm -hmm. texture is different. Mm. But I mean, as I say, it's a matter of Who trying knows? it. Yeah. yeah. Those are not um, a native, a native crops from the south. Crops, yes. So yeah, we no. try to use more what is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I probably... mentioned cacao because there is like currently in Africa they have like they had a bit lots of issues with the climate and there is less production and now in Latin America the price has exploded from something like two thousand to five, six, seven, eight thousand per ton for the the cheapest wow. cacao which is like, yeah. people are getting crazy here with the cacao right now. So, um, I mean, it's, it's a commodity which has a lot of um, uh, market, of, of sure. But um, if, if we can show that we can grow crops or commodities which have like good market with bamboo better and, and have a better quality, more people will start doing bamboo agroforestry to boost their crops. Definitely. So, Definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if, if you we can have, have also the, yeah, yeah. If we have any, sure. if we have any project up north, probably I'll try that. I'll take this as a tip, uh, because mm -hmm. I know up north cacao, I mean, coffee at least is growing well. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we could try that. But south side, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I really doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to try. Yeah. I mean, uh, there is also different types of, of coffee in Brazil. They have lowland coffee. Um, mm -hmm. which, uh, it, it's not the best coffee, but it's still coffee, you know? Um, so <laughs> at the end, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and th there we could maybe link to the third main topic, which is collaboration with academia. So, um, mm -hmm. this plot is also super interesting. I can imagine for your, your collaboration with the universities, um, are they like interested into this uh, plot? Because I mean, who has been testing bamboo plantation in Africa for 12 years? I think this is a pretty unique um, setup you have there. Pretty, uh, it, it, it's it's worth a lot of experience there, which uh, yeah. probably for the universities for studies, this would be like a gold mine, <laughs> literally, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I could not could not agree more with you because this is actually like, as I say, a lab where you can research so many things, not just about bamboo, but what bamboo can do with the different crops, with the soil, with the water. Uh, to the to the environment itself, to the ecosystem. So there's so much mm -hmm. to 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 explore. This is the reason that's the biggest project that we have is exactly to build educational and the research center on this area because we already have like a field to study. But the collaboration right now we have just a collaboration with the architecture faculty. But uh, soon mm -hmm. soon we have like agriculture, we have like environmental uh, art ways. I mean, there's so much to 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 research there. So yeah, you're right regarding this. Awesome. So is it uh, what you're mentioning, like this Grow Colorful Ghana nonprofit organization um, collaboration you're also doing where you want to, or is that another one regarding bamboo well, education on site? This is another one, but this is what we have been discussing in this workshop that we had in Mozambique, because the plan is to try to create an curriculum that it works for the Saharan region, but the different region, context. Yes. Yeah, so most of these awesome. might work differently for Ghana, but mm -hmm. also work differently. But this is what we discussed. We had the, the High Mine uh, University again mm -hmm. through uh, the uh, support. We did this workshop mm -hmm. for 10 days where we're discussing what the curriculum of this educational and research center could look like. But not just okay. in Mozambique, yeah. but in sub-Saharan region. So this is, is is very important topic. One question is in Mozambique: is is there the, this green belt reforestation green belt? It, does it pass through Mozambique and has bamboo been used there, or because um, there is you mentioned the Sahara, so it did click in my mind. And basically, there is a project which is the Great Green Belt in Africa, where they are reforesting mainly um local plants and, and trees but um i don't know if is this something in mozambique too and I, are they I, using I, bamboo there not not really i've read the projects and i know the project 
And Mozambique mm-hmm. seems to be part of this because Mozambique is part of the, um, is a mem- being part member since uh, two- and I've read about exactly. this project and I'll tell sure that uh, Mozambique is part of this. But so far, we are the one restarting this uh, bamboo educational and propagation and in, in, in Mozambique. Very few uh, organizations were doing this, but now it's picking mm-hmm. up because I know at least one or two organizations that are doing that and they have almost a hundred plus hectares that uh, planted of bamboo. So it's picking in up Mozambique. in Mozambique as well. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's great yeah, news. Yeah. And are you, yes, are is. you talking with them or is it yeah, like yeah, yeah. communication? Yeah. Okay. No, it's a great communication. They've been in our two uh, workshop that we promoted in Mozambique. So, I mean, we have to work together. It's, it's, uh, you cannot work by yourself if you're doing bamboo. Uh, ideally, and... ideally, but it's one of the big challenges, right? Paulino to, to collaborate and to talk, communicate is, is, is challenging too, like the fires. <laughs> yeah. But on a different <laughs> level. <laughs> no, like, like, like me, we, I try to get in touch with everyone that does bamboo and try to collaborate. Mm-hmm. It's the same as you mentioned now, Bro Colorful Canada. Okay, I'm, I'm in touch with Rabea, I'm in touch with everyone else. And uh, we had some people from Ghana coming to Mozambique so we could discuss the, the curriculum that we are talking about. For the research center so that cool. is, that's the, because Ghana wants to build a research center. Mozambique wants to build a research center. So if we have a standard a curriculum, this is great. Mm-hmm. And we exchange the experience. The way the bubble Absolutely. grows in Ghana is a different that uh, grows in Mozambique. So the Mozambicans mm-hmm. can go to Ghana to get like, some experience in Ghana and come to Mozambique and vice versa. This is the way it should work. For awesome. Me. So that's I absolutely agree. Yeah. No, yeah. the collaboration is very, is very important because uh, the Balcoa growing in Ghana or the Vulgaris growing in Ghana doesn't grow the same way in Mozambique. And this is what we need yeah. to start in the research. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really into collaboration. Awesome. That's really awesome. And, and you mentioned before also the, another topic, which I've already, already also done, a, I think bamboo podcast about, which uh, is the eco uh, system services of bamboo, which, um, most people kind of don't understand yet because it's kind of a new concept thinking that like the natural things have a, a value. But if you break it down, it, it's totally logic, right? So um, how, how do you explain to other people who are new to the concept, how do you explain the bamboo ecosystem services? Yeah, as I say, it's a new topic and this is our first fight now to convince the people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we start yeah. well so far with this our workshop that we get. We had so many um, mm-hmm. institutions involved and they didn't really know what bamboo can do. For instance, one of the biggest problems that we have in Mozambique is deforestation. And if mm-hmm. you convince the local community that so you can do a bamboo charcoal, it's even like it's 10 mm-hmm. times better than waiting for the tree that takes 20 to 50 years to grow. That bamboo takes all it. Yeah. And from the first year, if you get the right bamboo to do charcoal, that's, that's voila, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a magic. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And additionally, regarding bamboo charcoal, I don't know, probably you know it already, but the thing which is interesting, if you use bamboo charcoal, you have less smoke. So basically you're cooking healthier because smoke is one of the health hazards from, from cooking with, with natural um, uh, wood or, or bamboo. Because normally it's a simple housing and you have lots of smoke in there. So basically bamboo creates less smoke because it's not a tree, it's a giant grass. 